In this video, I'm showing three uh, input of the range type, or what I'll call a slider, and they are controlling the amount of red, green, and blue in a color. So I'm displaying the color in a div, and I'm also uh, displaying the individual amounts of red, green, and blue in these, uh, I think, spans, and then I'm showing the hex code at the bottom. So it's a little bit about color and a little bit about sliders or range inputs. Okay, the code can be found at this URL. So here we go. So I have a little bit of a style. I have some inline style, but the a style at the top I have is just to say that the sliders are uh, 200 pixels. And I also made this inline style of the div uh, 200 by 200. And then I made the labels of 50. And so the, the red, the green, and the blue, those are the labels. And they all have a fixed width. And so that, that made these numbers uh, line up a little bit better for me. Okay, so that was the little bit of style. Here's my header. Here is my div. So I have some inline style width and height. I gave it a border in case I go all the way to white. You can still see it's there. Um, I gave it a background color. This is my initial background color of 80, 80, 80, which is sort of a medium gray. And then I have an input of the type range. That's what this thing I'm going to call a slider. Um, it has a minimum and a maximum value. So the range of these numbers, we're using eight bits to represent the amount of red, the amount of green, the amount of blue. And so that's two to the eighth or 256 possibilities. And we use the numbers uh, zero to 255. I give it initial value of uh, 128. In hex, that's the uh, 80. So when I refresh, we all have a decimal value of 128, which corresponds to a hex of 80. And then there is the amount of red, green, and blue in hex code, and also showing up in these uh, spans. So I give it an ID. I give it a, a class. So I didn't point that out, but the styling of the slider was based on its class. So this is styling uh, all three uh, sliders. I could have also said input of the range type that would have also worked. So I could have, I did this based on class because I was following somebody else who did it based on class, but I could have also done it based on the, um, the type of HTML input. Okay, so that's what the that class is for. And then I have on input. So anytime I change the slider value, I'm calling a function and I'm using the same function for all of us. So the, the same function is called by all of the sliders. I have a label just saying that this is red. I've connected it, to, uh, use the four to connect it to the slider. And then I have a span for actually displaying on the page the amount. And I have that for red, for green, for blue. Um, then I have a, a div down here for displaying the hex value, which started off at uh, pound sign or hashtag or whatever you want to call it, 8088. That's where I start. So here's the function that I am calling. Uh, I am going to get the amount of red, green, and blue from the page. And perhaps I'm going to use some kind of array, uh, but I'm just using uh, just the three individual variables, red, green, and blue, getting them off the page. And I am parsing those integers. So I'm using uh, a way to get from the decimal of the number to the hexadecimal version of the number and that relies on them turning turning an integer into a string, knowing that it's hexadecimal, that I want the hexadecimal string. 
And so then it's got to be understood as a number. So that's why the parse int. So I'm making sure that my code understands these values coming in are numbers. And again, that is uh, what we get off the page is normally a string. So if you want it to be understood as a number, you're responsible for doing that, hence the parse int. Here is in the little spans uh, showing that amount of red, green, and blue. So it's the document get element by ID, SP red, inner HTML is red. So that is this display. As I make that slider, I am changing that. So that is what this part does. Now I am changing the color of the div at the top. That's what this next line of code does. So I'm going to the page, document get element by ID, div color. That's this box up here. I'm going to change its style, particularly its background color. And then there's, if normally, if I said RGB, open parenthesis, and then three decimal numbers, that would uh, change the color based on a set of three decimal numbers between 0 and 255. But uh, I want to do it in code and change it based on some variables. Um, and so I am, and I borrowed this from Stack Overflow for the most part. Um, I'm using what's called a temporal literal. So that's this little back tick mark here. And so I'm saying RGB open parenthesis, that's the sort of literal part. And then my variables go in dollar sign curly brackets. And then that just will substitute the number in. Uh, in those places. And so that's how I'm getting the color of this to change. And so uh, here's a little comment to read a little bit more about uh, string templates or template literals. And again, here's another trick I was uh, taking from that Stack Overflow page about colors. And I want to show the hex code. So I want to turn my red and my green and my blue into hexadecimal. So here's the main trick to string 16. But red must already be understood as an integer to convert it to a string. If it were already a string, it wouldn't change. So again, that's why I'm using parsint above. Um, and then it's possible that my number is very low. And so here my number was six, and that does not take two hexadecimal digits, but when I make the hexadecimal code, I want two digits, so I need to put a zero in front. And that's what the pad is doing. So it will, if needed, it will put zero, one zero, or if I'm all the way at zero, two zeros in the front. And then after I've made the hex code, I am displaying it in that div down there at the bottom. So that's what I wanted to show you, a little bit of playing around with color, with uh, template literals, with uh, sliders or uh, range inputs. All right. Thanks for your attention.